Hello. Hey. Hello. Morning. Give, 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 give people a couple of minutes to join. See what we got on the agenda today. XD incremental XDS. Audio problem. As long as Chris is here, I'm going to add the uh, DCO bot to the agenda. My, sure, set, send complaints my way. My my favorite topic. <laughs> uh, could we add, I think we pushed a conversational PR on the VP integration that touches on some of the modularization that I think is needed across multiple parties. Might be a good place to kick off that discussion as well. Sure. Thank you. Well, should we just get going? Yes, no? Sure. All right. You want to go first, Harvey, with the incremental proposal? Yeah, so um, uh, Nicholas and myself have uh, put a proposal out for sort of evolving XDS. You know, it's designed to, I think I've mentioned this in previous community meetings, we, we have some pain points around scaling XDS up to very large configuration sizes and also dealing with use cases such as serverless where 
you need to do um, essentially late binding. You need to uh, on-demand load from Envoy, possibly with, I'd say, request halted in the data pipeline, um, additional cluster resources, and so on. So there is a very concrete proposal out there um, currently under review with a whole bunch of feedback threads. I think we ba basically have consensus on where we want to go with that. But this is kind of like an opportunity and just to sort of telegraph this to folks that please speak up if you have any sort of thoughts or opinions here, because uh, we would like to actually start turning this into concrete protos and actually implementing parts of these over the coming months. And that uh, would be really awesome to make sure this moves in the direction, particularly if you have like shared concerns, if you're working on similar kinds of, let's say, serverless use cases. Would you ever do you want anything else, uh, Nicholas? Are you made? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just curious, um, when, 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 have, when did we gather enough feedback and when should we like decide this is the plan? Uh, there's there's a bunch of comments on the doc. I, I would encourage everyone to, to go and read the doc because it's not, I, I don't consider it a huge change. It's actually the implementation within Envoy is actually really simple, um, but it has large implications for, you know, for long-term use. So if people out there kind of care about this, I would really encourage people to look. Um, I'd still like to resolve some of the version comments Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to talk about that now for like five minutes, that's fine. I, I don't think we're actually very far off. So my, my main concern was really as I started to look at kind of implementing Envoy side version tracking and stats and then admin output, I, I basically realized that in the incremental case, yeah. sorry, what? Oh, um, in the, in the incremental case, having, you know, one version per resource, but not like a transactional version is pretty problematic from a debugging perspective. So, um, we can, we can do it in the doc, but I, I would like to figure out a way where I get that you might want to have a per version resource. It would be awesome if we could simplify it such that, you know, there's a, there's a transactional kind of version and then any resource that is applied in that transaction just gets that, that version. I think that's a lot simpler, but if we want like a per version resource, I would suggest that we keep the top level version. So there's basically the concept of a transaction version and then we optionally allow a per version resource. Um, so, if, if no per version resource is applied, Envoy will take the transaction version and apply that to each resource that was applied. And if there is a per, a per version resource, Envoy will keep track of the transactional version for debugging reasons. And then on a per resource, it'll apply the, the per version resource. Yeah, I mean, the thing is like this, I do have a worry about there being some complexity here in particular, like, you know, understanding how you're supposed to use these different versions and different management s servers, and they'll be implemented uh, somewhat inconsistently. For example, um, in some situations, you're only going to have per version resources and you won't have this like CDS wide um, ver versioning, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I totally hear that. Um, I, I just, I feel pretty strongly that it's a non-starter to, to not have this, this like transaction version just because it's a, it's a super common debugging situation in which your, your example holds like you go from zero yeah. to two to zero and it's like, you don't know what happened. Right. I mean, it's like, we, we, we have to allow people to debug I those mean, cases. I think I definitely want to, I think I would want to know in debugging, what is the last transaction version that arrived in the wire. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. But yeah. That's, that's different. Yeah, that, that is just telling me essentially what, what was the last local exchange I made with my management server. It tells me nothing about the semantic content of the resources I uploaded. Do you use nouns for that? Sorry, what? The nouns. The nouns for debug? Uh, I mean, we could, but it, uh, yeah, I mean, like these are these are things that we probably shouldn't rat hole about here. Like we can take it back to the doc. Um, I don't like. I don't feel super strongly about uh, like the semantics of of like whether we use the nonce or we use the version. It, it just, I, I guess, my point is, I suspect that most people do not need per resource version complexity. And if you gave them that one version field, that is actually going to be enough for most people because the way that I would likely implement it at Lyft is even if we were doing incremental, 
I would basically, I would be, I, I would be incremental, but within a particular backend config SHA effectively. So it's like, as I ask for the resources, right? It's like resources might come back at a particular version and the version field actually might be the same. So it might be still like version four, right? And then as I ask for more resources, I just internally track them at version four when they were applied. And then let's say the backend config system, someone does something and it switches to version five. So then if I incrementally ask for something, the next message would come back with version five and that's independent of, of nots. So that's why I, I actually think that you kind of need them to be separate. Um, so like, I, I totally get that there's extra complexity here, but I, I think that what I've proposed, it's the most flexible and it'll make everyone happy. Um, like, however you want to design your system, you can do it basically. I mean, I said, like what you're describing there and using this version to describe like the current state of resources that you're serving up from the management server is not how the, the version is used today, right? It's used essentially um, just to acknowledge each individual. That's well, on the wire, which is different. So no, no. So that's how, um, so that might, like, I'm, I'm not sure what exactly is happening today, but that's how we're using it at Lyft today. Like we have a backend SHA basically that is the version and that version stays constant, like even through different fetches, right? So basically like we, we have a SHA of config and then as the config SHA changes, right? Okay. Um, yeah, let, let's continue this in the doc. Okay. Uh, another issue that popped up when I looked through the document is this appears to be the first place where a new feature will be supported in the gRPC data plane API, but not in the REST data plane API. And so I've got concerns about breaking with precedent there. Yeah, I mean, the main reason for this is just that doing this with the REST is uh, a lot more complicated because, you know, in gRPC, you have bidirectional streaming semantics. So it's very easy mm -hmm. to imagine delivering some partial resources and then later on asking for more and so on, having this two way exchange. With right. REST, uh, we would have to design a way to actually fit that on top, uh, retrofit that on top of REST. I mean, is there actually a strong need for this, like this level of scalability and on demandness in the REST world? Yes. Uh, can you elaborate sort of on what the use case there is? Uh, our control plane at Pinterest uh, currently uses the REST implementation of the Envoy Data Plane API. Uh, and we're, we're looking at using on-demand config loading um, because we've got a similar number of clusters to support as other folks who are also interested in this feature. But I mean, but, but, but couldn't you switch to gRPC? I mean, uh, uh, I, I think a, a case could be made to, to rewrite one's data plane, uh, excuse me, to rewrite one's control plane, um, data plane interface. Uh, it, is something I would prefer not to do gratuitously. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, given the existing investment in sure. REST and the, the existing precedent within Envoy. Sure. So here's, I, I think here's probably our stance is I don't uh, like, I don't think we're opposed to supporting this functionality in REST, but I don't think that we can assume that the people who are doing the work like have to backfill it because it's totally non trivial. So if, if you or someone else wants to come in and figure out like how to do it with rest, I don't think there's going to be any opposition to, to, to that. But like, I think you probably have to do that, that heavy lifting. Okay. Is that fair, Harvey? I mean, yeah, I, I yeah, that, that's, that's a very reasonable position. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I mean, in the in the interest of time, why don't we go back to the doc? Because I, I do feel, I just want to make sure that we really think through all this versioning stuff because it's the kind of thing where if we don't think through it now, we're going to have a problem later. Um, so it's worth investing just some time into that now. Maybe I could schedule some time uh, again this week so we can have a half hour just. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, why don't you, um, what I would do is, is there a GitHub issue tracking the doc? I, I actually can't remember. I think there was at some point on the Envoy API repo. Yeah, okay. we close all of those out actually. Okay, why don't, we, why, don't we, why don't we do this? Why don't you make a new issue in Envoy tracking in, uh, implementing incremental XDS? Um, why don't you put a link to the doc in there? 
Um, and then maybe just say that we're going to have a meeting later this week and, and just see if anyone else wants to join. Um, and then we could schedule a dedicated meeting towards the end of this week. Okay. Cool. Okay. Great. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay. That's the GSOC. So yeah, it's actually yeah, fantastic. We have a Google Summer of Code students who's going to be working with uh, Envoy uh, with Matt, myself, I think. Constance is listed as a mentor as well. Um, this is uh, Anurud, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, and uh, he'll be working on fuzzing. So we've actually kicked off the fuzzing efforts already, and we're making our way through a whole bunch of backlog of uh, sort of server config fuzz stuff. I plan on sort of looking at protocol fuzzing shortly, but I think he'll be looking at a, a whole, there's, there's a lot of work to do there. We actually have a, we opened an issue, or actually added to the issue yesterday, a list of uh, potential projects to work on please do contribute to that issue if you have additional things you'd like to see fuzzed in Envoy. Uh, this is actually a really useful way to find bugs. Um, uh, we, uh, we have like, you know, continuous uh, sort of um, fuzzing uh, using what uh, Chromium's cluster fuzz running. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, you, you should expect that your adversaries are also doing this. Yeah, my, my thinking is let's have them start on the server validation which like yeah. per, per our conversation will I'm sure expose like 60 bugs. And um, that will, because that's so similar to what you already did, it should be pretty straightforward to actually yeah. make that happen. So my thinking is to have them do that, have them fix like the 50 bugs that occur in the validation path. And then we can maybe move him on to more complicated stuff. Yeah, I think maybe EDS after that. Yep, yeah. 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 all right. Do you know when he starts? I think it's about a month's time. Okay. Awesome. Is the idea, sorry, is the idea there that the fuzzing would eventually be run as part of the continuous integration suite? Probably not. You need significantly more resources than CI has available, but we do essentially have CI for fuzzing. With, so this cluster fuzz thing I described, this is infrastructure that the Chrome project or Chromium is operating for a whole bunch of open source projects. And on every commit that you make, um, it will actually just check it out and spin up a bunch of VMs and GCP and uh, throw a bunch of resources at fuzzing that and actually files issues automatically with the Envoy security team uh, when they come up. Cool, thanks. Yeah, it's it's super awesome. Like the, the bugs that it's already uncovered just from config loading is fantastic. Obviously those aren't that scary, but we have ideas of how to, the, the problem with fuzzing or the quote problem is that it can't use any network. So how we do normal integration tests basically won't work. But Harvey and I have an idea of how we can make a custom transport socket to use for fuzzing. And then we should be able to actually basically fuzz the full flow, like all the way back to the router. Um, and I, I suspect that will uncover some more interesting and scary issues. So that's really exciting. Okay, um, let's just talk really briefly about the DCO bot. Like I, I send off a really like nasty email to Chris last week. I, I like, I'm, I'm kind of at my wits end. Like it's, this is like by far the most painful thing that we deal with. It's like an endless stream of people that don't know what to do or like the bot is broken. Um, so I just, you know, like to me, I, I put in that email, I, I think there's some like really basic usability things that can be done to just help guide people from the bot, like in what to do and what went wrong. So I guess my main question to Chris is, since most CNCF projects are moving towards DCO, like can yep. CNCF invest some resources and making the bot less terrible? Yeah, I mean, if you give us explicit issues, we're happy to fund some work um, to send pull. I mean, it's all open source, so we're happy to improve it. So just just let us know in detail what you want. Um, in the Nastagram you sent, you listed a couple things. Um, so we'll take a look at those. But for other folks in the Envoy community, if you have specific issues you'd like to see improved, let yeah, us know. Yeah, I, I mean, people should just reach out and, and, and say what their issues are. My, my main things, which I think would fix it, which are already in the email, yep. is just that the bot basically needs to be super clear of like, mm -hmm what it was checking, what was wrong, and actually have a link to some page with like de detailed information about how, yeah. how to fix what, what you did wrong, uh, possibly with like get commands and like the entire thing. Mm -hmm. It just needs to be a more like hand-holding process to help people mm -hmm. understand what went wrong. And there are edge cases in the bot where like there was something that happened last week mm -hmm. where like if you're 
email doesn't match like your GitHub email, the mm-hmm. bot doesn't even respond. It just hangs. Yep. So, like, like we have to fix, you know, those, those bugs. Yep. All right. Got it. Great. Um, okay. Uh, do we want to talk about the, um, uh, the VPP stuff? Sure. Um, so, uh, I did, uh, last night I pushed a pull request, um, that is, uh, entirely informational. So it is a, uh, you know, a proof of concept in the classic piece of crap uh, <laughs> implementation style, meaning uh, I basically just did whatever I had to do in order to, um, in order to make the thing work. Um, so please take the amount of replication and, uh, you know, just plain hacking uh, with a grain of salt. Um, but I think it, it provides uh, some value in uh, setting some discussion points on how we move forward uh, to make it work in a deployable fashion. So I guess to summarize the the biggest highlights that uh, are points that need to be resolved are we, Envoy currently has two socket classes. There's transport socket and then there's connection socket. And uh, because they're different classes and they're not, there's, there's no, so, so the, um, the integration of the transport socket stuff through the extension stuff that was just recently pushed uh, worked fantastically, right? So that's great. The problem is the listen and connect side of things is a separate implementation. Mm-hmm. And so we need to figure out what the plan is to unify that or to put in a parallel effort to allow the specification of an altered alternate transport for the connection side. I took a stab at, you know, naively just trying to go uh, refactor things and got entirely way over my head. (laughs) So, um, so at this point, what, you know, what I'm looking for is some direct feedback on, you know, where I hacked things and where things are just, uh, you know, done uh, ignorantly because it was what I had to do to get it to work. Um, and uh, how we can help. So there's really kind of like two phases that need to happen. You know, one is we need to make the, the Envoy stuff so that the extensions uh, are clean. And then I can go add the, the VPP implementation under that. And uh, I'm perfectly willing to work on any or all of that. And so the question is, you know, how do you want to move forward in identifying what's the right thing to do? Uh, what's the... The other, the other caution I have is it in my attempts to go do some naive refactoring, it became clear to me that this is going to be high risk if we do it, you know, the way I would have done if it were a clean slate uh, implementation, meaning I would just have a single socket class um, and then, der- you know, inherit, her- inherit that where we had separate uh, entities that needed to use different characteristics of that. I think that's going to be way, way too risky to, to, to lop off in one, in one chunk. And so I really need you guys to let me know where else, how else could we cut this such that we can uh, take more baby steps that are lower risk um, because I don't think this is a, a trivial implementation. Yeah, I, I think what I'd like to do is I, I I don't have any comments right now, and I don't I don't think anyone else will mostly just be no. I, and I pushed this yeah. late last night, so no, I'm not fine. Yeah, but what I, what I'd like to do is I will tag like four or five people on on the PR um, to kind of just take a first pass and kind of look at it, um, and then I, I I think from there we can either uh, talk about it again in two weeks time at yep. the next community call, uh, just because I'm. I kind of have a feeling it's going to be complicated enough that uh, we can do it in the PR, um, but you know, we can start there, but I have a feeling right. we're going to need, a, need an in-person. I, I, I also wrote up a, a, a Google doc that's linked in the PR that describes, you know, the overall scenario. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll continue to extend that. I realized it didn't, I didn't include the complete test configuration. So I can do that so that somebody else could stand up what it is I ran and, and test it. Um, and you know, there's, there's sections in that. 
Um, okay. My, my one question is, do you feel like this is enough that we should loop in the covalent people or, or do you feel like we should get uh, like a little further along before asking them to actually look at it? I would, I would tend to think you, we want to get a little further along because my concern here is less about, you know, the stuff that I'm adding from the VPP world and more about the structure of the refactoring that's going to happen on Envoy itself. So yeah, it's more that I just, and this is my comment, which we've had in a couple of different emails with, with, with Ed. Is I just think I don't want to wind up in a situation where we discuss a whole bunch of like extension points and refactors. And then we go to the covalent people and the way that they're using E EBPF, like it like doesn't work for some reason. Yeah. Right, so, right. Right. So like, I think it's totally reasonable to, to start the conversation, but I'd like to, once we think that there's enough to look at, like maybe we do like an initial round of reviews, um, mm -hmm. I, I would like to get them involved just so that we don't wind up doing a whole bunch of stuff and agreeing on stuff, you know, after several weeks and then they come in and say, oh, but like, what about this? This is not going to work. And then we're, and then we're back I'm, to the drawing board. I'll, I'll say I, my, my strong tendency personally is more eyeballs earlier is better. Yeah, um, you know, it, you know, as long as and this this is a great commuter, so this is not a problem. As long as everybody is constructive, it, the, the more people you have interacting early, the better. Yeah, and the covalent guys are certainly constructive. Yep. So, um, I, I'd love to see them pulled in. I know that we had some stuff around the quick work, where there was an interest in sort of things close to this as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. How do we generalize out from what we're doing right now with sockets? I think that would be a very valuable set of input to have too. Yep. Uh, and so I'm all for all eyeballs. Yeah, and and you'll you'll be in Europe next week, right? Um, uh, you will be. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we can potentially talk about this in in person also. No, I think that would be awesome. Okay. Great. Did um did anyone else have any comments or questions on on this stuff? So I guess the other comment I would make is, given that we've got multiple projects that are going to work on this, it would help if we were to solidify the requirements. So I don't know whether you want to do that within, you know, the current Google Doc I have, we could expand that or we could run a separate doc that codifies at the very least the use cases that, uh, that we need to go past. Yeah. Um, and that's where, and that's where I think that considering quick uh, VPP and the covalent Cilium stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I think if we look at those three cases, as long as we have people at the table who can speak to those three cases, yeah. um, I think we will end up designing something very solid. Uh, do, so do I, I, a, a requirement stock of the things that you need that we could append onto for quick, or are, do we think we're going to meet and then discuss and create that coming out? I think we need to meet and discuss it. Okay. I, I, I mostly what I have are a bunch of questions when you look at the, the write-up I have uh, just because I don't have enough experience with the Envoy code base to make any, uh, you know, meaningful contribution at this point. Um, from, the, from the VPP uh, POC, the other thing to note is that what I did here was just take one of the, um, one of the test cases for the VPP host stack and add Envoy as a TC proxy into it. So, because um, the other thing, given that I'm also, you know, part of the, the test team on VPP, is to, you know, the, the reason why I like the use cases defined early is so that we can stand up uh, test cases uh, much earlier in the development phase. Cool. I've, I've uh, just looped in the people from our side who've done similar work for Quick, and I will take a look at it as well. I assigned myself Perfect. as a reviewer. So all comments are welcome, you know, throw stones, that's fine. <laughs> you have a particular time frame in, in which you're like really itching to get this done. Like, is there a particular milestone that you're trying to meet? Ed? Yeah, so th there, there's a matter of aspirations and there's a matter of realities. So let me sort of throw this out purely as aspirational. Um, it would be lovely if we could get something that, that was up and working that we could plug into at some point this summer. Um, I think that okay. would be highly desirable. Um, yeah, that's fine. I, I, I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't like, you know, four weeks from now or something like you- Oh, like, last week. That's <laughs> not, not that I wouldn't throw a parade if it were four weeks from now, and I would certainly not try and slow yeah. things down, but I would be shocked. You would be seeing my shocked face. 
Um, yes. So, you know, particularly yeah. if you're trying to get something right um, that's usable by multiple parties, um, it will take a little bit of time to sort it out. And like I said, so sort of, sort of sort, sorting things out this summer, I think, is a reasonable aspiration. And yeah. we'll just see how the chips fall. Yeah, I, I mean, I would, I would like to, I, 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 like, I'm, I'm pretty aggressive in terms of getting stuff done. So I think, I, I think we can do early summer. I mean, like, let's, let's try to iterate on this. But I, I would also be shock, shock face if we can figure out a design in less than four weeks. Like, it's just going to take a bunch of time. So let's, <laughs> let's make sure that we loop people in and give people time to actually comment. I, I just want to make sure that we get this right so that we don't have to do this again. Uh, that's my, that's I, my. I, yeah, I like early summer very much as an aspiration. Let's try and drive to that. Okay, sounds good. Cool. Um, did anyone have any other quick questions or comments or stuff? Cool. Well, have a have a good week. All right. Bye. Thanks. Have a great week. Talk in a couple weeks.